Hey, good evening. So today we're going to take a look at DERPCAM, D-E-R-P-C-A-M. It's CAM software. That is, it's software that's intended to take CAD files and translate them to something a CNC machine can understand. In this case, G-code. It's an open source project, so it's free to download, free to use. You can find DERPCAM on GitHub, just search for it there. It was actually written by a friend of mine. Uh, I also contributed some of the pathfinding algorithms, so I'm biased. Get over it. It's been developed with hobbyists in mind. Most of the CAM options out there are commercial software. They're expensive, they're very feature complete, but they're, they're also very, very complicated. Um, as a hobbyist, even if you could afford the financial outlay of buying this software or leasing this software, um, it's it's still overkill. Uh, you know, as a as a hobbyist, you want something that's easier to use, a bit more user friendly, something that holds your hand and walks you through it. Um, Derp cams designed to be sort of batteries included. The default options should give you sane output. Um, you know, if you don't understand what an option is, leave it alone. It's it's going to be fine. Yeah, that's about it. So without further ado, let's uh, let's open it up. Okay, let's just jump in at the deep end. I'm going to presume that you have a CAD file that you want to turn into a physical part on a CNC machine. I do. Here is mine. This is actually a change gear for my lathe. The originals are made of cast iron, but I want to cut this one out in Delrin, which is a nylon-like plastic. It's low friction and hard wearing. So you're going to want to select part of your drawing. You can either click here, actually on the drawing itself, or you can come over to the menu on the right hand side. You can do fairly standard things here. If I hold control down, it will select more than more than one component. But for the time being, let's just select polyline. DERPCAM has the concept of operations, so we want to apply an operation to this polyline. What specifically do we want to do? We want to move the end mill to the outside of the polyline and follow the edge round. That will cut this part free of the stock material. So, machining, outside contour. This will bring us to the tools and preset menu. Here, DERPCAM is prompting you to select a tool or optionally a preset to apply to the operation. A tool is fairly easy to understand. It's the physical attributes of a tool, how wide it is, how long it is, things like that. A preset is a set of parameters you might want to apply to a particular operation. So if you were milling polycarbonate, you would want a very different set of feeds and speeds to if you're milling steel, for example. So let's have a little look at some of these. An end mill configuration, you need a human readable name, something to identify the tool when you rummage about in your box full of tooling, as well as the physical attributes, what it's made of, its diameter, number of flutes, and the, the actual flute length, for example. In the presets, we're going to things, find things like feeds and speeds, um, along with a bunch of other settings. Again, you're going to need a human readable name here, something to identify this preset uh, underneath a particular tool from any other preset. I tend to use the material that the preset is used for, uh, for this setting. If you don't understand what a configuration option is here, go with the default. DERPCAM is trying to do the right thing for you here. If you go with the, if you go with the defaults, it's going to be fine. So, rather than set a preset, I'm actually going to just select a tool, uh, so we go with the default options in place of preset here. We'll play with presets later. And before I actually apply that, let's just look in one other place. Workpiece. Workpiece has a material setting. If you're not going to apply a preset to a tool, you're going to want to apply a material here. 
This is how DARPCAM knows what a sane set of configuration for a particular tool is. Let's click on plastics, because that's what I'm doing. I'm deliberately not setting the thickness here, because we'll come back to that later. So again, click on my polyline, machining, outside contour. I want a fairly narrow diameter on the end mill here, so I can actually reach the back of all these teeth. So this 2mm end mill should do the job. And OK. Right, you can see we've got a red warning on the Operations tab. Let's click into Operations. Here we see our outside contour operation. And the warning. Neither material thickness nor depth of cut is set. I could just set the depth of cut for a particular operation by just typing it in, uh, typing it in here. But I'm deliberately not doing that. The depth of cut is going to be the same for all of these operations, so a better place to set this would be in the workpiece, the workpiece thickness. I'm cutting this out of 12 millimeter Delrin. While I'm here, I'm also going to set the clearance. This is the height that the tool retracts to before making any rapid movements. Uh, I'm going to be putting a clamp in. I'm, I'm going to mill this center hole first, and I'm going to be putting a big clamp on here. So just to make sure I don't crash into that, I'm going to put a conservative clearance value in here. Just for completeness, while we're here, the safe entry. This is the height under which the tool will stop making rapid moves and go with your configured feeds and speeds instead. OK, let's go back to our operation. You can see the warning is cleared. Uh, you can see the this blue line has appeared, which represents the area that's actually going to be milled. But what are these gaps all about? If I go down, if I look into the some of the operation options, we'll see this auto tabs value. So tabs here are when you're cutting a piece free, um, we deliberately skip this little bit of material just so when the whole shape is cut free that it's still held securely to the so it's still held securely to the workpiece um, so when it get, cuts free it doesn't start flopping about the place I've already mentioned I'm going to put a central clamp in here so I'm not actually going to want any tabs but let's just play with this option just for fun uh, what would happen if we said we wanted five automatic tabs in here you can see once it updates, we've now got one, two, three, four, five automatic tab placements. Notice this one isn't actually very good. It's it hasn't uh, the algorithm hasn't picked a particularly useful spot for this tab, and for that reason, you can actually manually specify where you, where you want the tabs to go instead. Let's so let's put them right on the edge of the teeth where they're going to be more uh, where they're going to be most useful. And if we apply that, one, two, three, four in the places I selected. Notice that this the manual tab settings overrides the auto tab value. I've asked it for five to be placed automatically, but the four I have explicitly specified override that. So to get rid of them again, you can just click. If you put a tab anywhere, just click on it to get rid of it. Apply. And, as I've already mentioned, if you don't want tabs, switch them off entirely. If you never want tabs, this would be a good time to go Edit, Preferences, Auto Tabs, and set the minimum number of tabs down to zero. This will make sure that a tab is, like automatic tabs, are never generated. Okay, at this point, you want to review some of the default options that DARPCAM selected for you. In particular, the feeds and speeds. You'll notice here, DARPCAM has decided on 472 millimeters a minute. 
uh, feed rate and 41 for the plunge um, also 23,000 RPMs on my machine this really isn't ideal I can get away with a much slower RPM speed than this and my plunge rate I can probably step up again the feed rate's actually not bad for my machine this is this is going to be dependent on your machine so I could set these manually here but a better thing to do here if I just del press if I click on this and delete click somewhere else it'll go back to the default setting you can see it's a grey font this implies the default setting rather than manually set all these I can select a tool preset click on there load a preset and this was the end mill I was using and this preset is what I want to apply this is a set of feeds and speeds that works well on my machine in plastics so let's apply that you can see now RPM of 4000 much higher plunge rate similar enough similar enough feed rate as you work with Derpcam you'll end up with a set of sensible presets for the tooling that you use most often. I encourage you rather I encourage you rather than just manually editing these settings in this menu to actually go and create presets. This gives you a reminder next time you come to use a particular tool in, on your machine in a particular material. It's a reminder what speeds and feeds you used last time. So you know it's a, it so it's a good way to remember what it's a good way of keeping notes on what feeds and speeds work for you, work for your machine in a particular material. The observant among you will notice I've got a warning active. Spindle speed of 4000 is lower than the minimum of 8000. So if we look at the spindle speed that we've inherited from the profile, our spindle speed is set 4000 RPM. So the question is, where is it getting the minimum of 8,000 from? This is actually in the main preferences. Because Derpcam's aimed at hobbyists with hobby machines who are typically using brushless DC motors with a better power output at higher RPMs. Uh, this is at something very conservative. I can actually get away with dropping my spindle speed right down here, but that's just, that's just my equipment. If I click OK there, you can see this warning is cleared. If you do need the higher RPMs, you're going to have to play with feed rates to try and compensate. If you go with a higher RPM, you're going to want to increase the feed rate so you don't start melting plastic. It's a balance. You're going to have to play. You're going to have to play with this just to find the best settings for your machine. Okay, let's get the rest of these loops done. So, what operation do we want for this guy? Uh, last time we went outside contour, um, you know, for the main for the main loop. Uh, this time, inside contour, maybe a sane choice. Let's try it. So again, we're going to need to pick an end mill. Uh, let's go with this 3.175 GP carbide end mill. I'll buy loads of these on eBay. And I don't have a perfect preset set up for this, but I'm just going to go with this polycarbonate uh, one at the moment, just for demonstration purposes. I'll come back and and uh, come up with better feeds and speeds for this before I actually perform the operation. Uh, so what do we what do we got? Uh, here we are transcribing a helix down into the material for whatever the depth of cut was set in that prefix that we just uh, chose, and then. Uh, take a loop, you know, like a, a path around the loop, uh, back to the helix, down into the material some more. This is going to leave us with a loose piece and uh, flapping about at the end when when it finally gets, you know, when it finally gets uh, cut loose, which is going to crash into our end mill and destroy it. Uh, so can we do better? Here is our operation. Let's click on inside contour and let's change that. 
Um, pocket sounds like it might be a good operation. Uh, pocket will mill out all this inside material, uh, but there's actually one here that's optimized for round holes. Uh, helical hole, let's go with that. Uh, so here this draws a helix all the way down through the material um, before coming back up to the top, moving out and doing the, the same thing for the next circle. Rinse and repeat. This is the one we want. Now let's click on these. Uh, I'll click on this hole and hold down control, click on that hole. So we can actually select the two of these together and uh, do both these operations in one. This time machining, drilled hole. Let's just push the end mill straight down through the material with an appropriately sized uh, drill bit. Uh, these holes are four millimeters, so scroll down. Here we go. Here's a four millimeter drill bit. I don't have an ideal preset and um, pointless, pointless you watching me set up a set up a new preset now. I'm going to come back and set up a proper preset for this, but in the meantime, let's just go with this one. Boom, and we're done. One, two, three, four. Loop, loops all taken care of. Okay, what other things do we have to do to, do to this? So, remember we said we were going to put a clamp in this hole before we cut the outer edge. Let's... So that means like, we're going to do these operations in the order they appear in this list. That means we want to reorder these. We have the arrows here that we can move things up and down. We don't move the operations here, we move the tools. If you think uh, the order of the tools, like the tool gets inserted in the CNC machine, um, when a tool needs to change it will generate a GCO command that, uh, that prompts a tool change. So it's the tool we want to move down to the end of the list here. Expand that. Okay, so now we cut the hole first, the big hole, and then the drill holes, and then the final path. Cool. File, save project, file, export G code. Okay, let's have a look at that. surface so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so these vertical lines, they're the drill holes, we're just plunging a drill bit straight down through the material. Cutting the centre hole, we're kind of drawing a helix down the middle, then a larger one, then a larger one, then a larger one. That's fairly obvious. Um, and then again, for this, you know, like for the outside loop, we uh, send down into the material, do step at a time. Let's see if we can watch that run. Play. My laptop doesn't really have the power for this sort of uh, simulation, but uh, here.
So, here, you can stay and watch this, or hang up at that. I don't really have much more to say. So I hope you either learned something, or enjoyed this, or yeah, got some value out of it. Um, I hope you give Derp Cam a go if you're looking for a cam. Um, just please let us know how you got on. Thanks for watching.